welcome to the Questioning Behaviour podcast. This is one of our side project episodes where Merla and I get to just catch up and, and discuss all topics related to the PhD and our experience. And it's what we call a, an office hour. So welcome everyone to our office hour. My name is Sarah Bowen and I'm here with my co-host Merla. Uh, for which I always never quite pronounce her name right. And I feel so terrible for anglicizing such a beautiful Dutch name. It's so... not even Dutch. <laughs> oh, God. Look at me. Look at me assuming things about you. What a mess. What a mess. Hey, guys. My name's Marla. Nice of you to hang out with us again. Let's, let's just stop discussing my name and let's actually just dive into the topic of today, which... Is something we kind of discuss all the time, but we do so without actually explaining to you what we mean. So we talk mm -hmm. all the time about PhDs, postdocs, associate and assistant professorships, and then full professorships. Um, we've also talked about teaching fellows and research fellows, and you know we have thrown at you in both the question behavior podcast, so the main thing, plus these episodes, we've just thrown a plethora of job titles at you without ever being really, really clear about what they are. So we <laughs> thought that we should maybe do an episode, which is just essentially explaining the system or the hierarchy, if you will, of academia. Because if there's one thing which is just not transparent, it's the world of academia and the job yeah. trajectory. Yeah. Um, Mela, can I, can I make a confession right yeah, now go to for you? It. I mean, I am, so, I am ready, my child. Please do confess all your sins. Okay. Okay, this isn't going to leave this room, right? I can... Yeah, no, totally. This is, this is confidential. This is a totally. privilege. Right? Totally. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really don't know the difference between an assistant and an associate professor. I mean, I've been in the PhD for three and a half years, and I have definitely spoken and use both of those terms, uh, and I've definitely nodded when people have <laughs> talked to me about it. Uh, and just yeah, oh yeah, can't can't believe they got that 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 job and not that one. Oof, <laughs> God, what were they thinking? Um, so, <laughs> so I mean, if if you do know the difference, when did you learn the difference? Is this something that you've always known? Um, has anyone ever <laughs> sat down and explained it to you? Like, I feel like I missed that conversation with my, yeah. I, I my feel academic like, parents. <laughs> yeah, I feel like with regards to academia, I, I've missed quite a few conversations and this was essentially one of them. So I feel like I've once had this conversation with my own supervisor when he got promoted from associate to... Oh, Wait a on. second, I was an assistant to full professor. Wait. Yeah, so this is the thing. So I'm always really doubtful as well about which one comes first. So I feel like, you know, you just asked me, when did you learn the difference? Um, Probably after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we are, maybe we are probably the wrong people to be asking these questions and getting reliable answers. But you know what? We never shy away from a challenge. Oh uh, no, never. Okay, so Mela, what is the difference? <laughs> You're being such an asshole. No, please tell us. Tell me. <laughs> I genuinely think that you become an assistant professor first because you're an assistant to another probably tenured professor and right. then you can be kicked up to an, so you, an association no you're gonna yeah we, oh my god i'm literally googling it as we speak so i have found an article an associate professor is a rank that is a rung above assistant professor so first you be an assistant then you become an associate and then sometimes, continuing the article here, an assistant mm -hmm. professor is granted promotion to the rank of an associate professor as recognition of his services as a teacher after three to four years in a college. This okay, sounds this very is American. American. Yeah. I mean, this is the other thing, right? Is that the terminology and even at the hierarchy in terms of the linearity of the hierarchy may be the same. The names of the positions or maybe the number of positions isn't universal yeah <laughs> which is which is great when you're working it's, in a universal market essentially. yeah it's it's really really not helpful so from this same article which i i will link down below um 
just so you can see what I'm cur- well, what I looked at when we were recording this. It also says, and this is something I didn't know that once. So, an assistant professor, the lowest, the, this sounds so dumb, the lowest rank after being, I suppose, a PhD or a postdoc. So, you would do a PhD, then do a postdoc if necessary, and in, in the contemporary market, definitely necessary. Maybe you'll even have to do uh, one, uh, two or three. I, I hope you don't, but it is possible. Mm-hmm. Then you become an assistant professor, which is an entry level position as an academic. Okay, that, that, this that is, is also then... the thing. Oh my god! It's also not tenured, by the way. You only get okay. tenure once you're an associate. This article is a mess. Uh, I, this is the other thing. There are three in my brain, and in Wikipedia's brain, as I have oh. the article in front of me. <laughs> uh, I was going to pretend that it was all me, but it's it's not me. Thank you, Wikipedia. There are three pathways within the UK. Okay. Right? Oh, there it's is... UK specific. Okay, let's hear yeah. it, then, Sherlock. Yeah. Yeah. So. Teaching career pathway, mm-hmm. research career pathway, mm-hmm. and can you guess what the third one is? Miscellaneous. Research and teaching career pathway. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So, okay. The, yeah. We also use terms interchangeably in the UK. So, you've heard of having a lecturer. Or a senior lecturer. Oh my god, yes, that's that's another trajectory that is completely like it this is the thing. Like people pretend that these things like map onto each other seamlessly and they just do not. Well, according to Wikipedia, they do. <laughs> do they though? Do they? Well, uh, th- so here, this is don't come for Wikipedia's ass if this is wrong, right? <laughs> so a, a lecturer, comma, clinical lecturer is equivalent to assistant professor okay right? sure uh and then senior lecturer is equivalent to associate professor and this is this is in the research and teaching career pathway okay sure and then i mean i i've heard of this term but i've got no idea what it means you you are a reader yeah i have <laughs> heard that i know someone who has that position at somewhere in london I, well, I know that you, you like read a subject like you can say hi I'm Sarah and I read economics at <laughs> Nottingham like I've heard I've never actually said that sentence out loud but no, I, you have. I, we have it on well, record no, there it is there it is that's me saying it the, the one and only time I'll ever say that <laughs> uh, and apparently a reader is or principal lecturer in some post-1992 institutions is equivalent <laughs> to full professor. A reader! What the hell? That doesn't even sound remotely like a professor. Yeah. And then, do you want to guess what the top position is? The top an, rank? An, an executive reader? I don't even know by this <laughs> stage. I don't know. A, okay. a CEO? A CE reader? Just, just tell me. Oh, I mean, I think they could do with some rebranding because you've just thrown out some excellent alternatives. Thank you. But um, the top rank I have here is professor slash chair. Okay, I get professor as a top rank, but what the fuck is a chair? <laughs> I don't know. Because to you me, if be someone a... tells me oh, I'm the chair of psychology, yeah. to me that sounds like you're the dean of the apartment, but that's not a teaching function. Right. I mean, no. Oh my no. god. That's like a managerial position. Anyway, yeah. So that, so that is equivalent to a distinguished professor. Oh, like an so, emeritus. Mm, uh, uh, em- emeritus. What? what do you call it in English? Emeritus. Isn't that when you are retired? Oh fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is the weird thing because, you know, if someone asks you, "Oh, what do you do?" You might say, oh, I teach at the university, or I'm a researcher at the university. No, if someone tells me that they <laughs> teach at the university, that could still mean, like, 50 things. Yeah, that, that no, is I know. just No, I can't deal with that ambiguity. But a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm a professor. But that's not true either, because when, when are you allowed to call yourself a professor only from, like, you know, professorship? So if you have, like, associate assistant, the whole shenanigans, like, would you call yourself a professor if you are quote unquote only an assistant professor that doesn't sound right but i i think you probably would 
right? I mean, you might Someone's have Someone's to... gonna correct your ass on that. Someone <laughs> is gonna just show up. Like, just, you know, I can just imagine, like, an, an old-ass man showing uh... up and being like, you're not a full professor yet. You're only an assistant professor. I can literally, I, mean, I can the... just imagine this. It's giving me I, anxiety. I wouldn't... Who is, who is this character, this voice <laughs> in your head? Because I want to know more about him. No, you no, you don't, but you correctly assumed it was a him. Oh, no, I said it was a man. Yeah, he's not even that old. But, like, yeah, he, he's, he's awful. He's just grim. He's got a pretty terrible lisp. Bless him. <laughs> oh, that, that's just me voice acting, which I can't do. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, th- this is also another question I have. Do you apply for a promotion, or are you like chosen, like in the home <laughs> games? You are the chosen the one. <laughs> out of, do you put your name in the goblet of fire and then I volunteer <laughs> as tribute or something? <laughs> who decides who gets a promotion, and is it sort of a like okay? you've met this threshold so you're automatically put in for a promotion like hey how does it work so (laughs) no i think i sort of know so from phd to a postdoc you have to apply to like a fuck ton of of postdoc positions um even if your supervisor offers you one and you stay in the same institution you still have to go through the entire application process there is no easy way around this is what it is postdoc to likely assistant professor or if going from a phd immediately to an assistant professor i mean good fucking luck to you um Mm. is i think the same thing it's just a regular job application but i think from then on it becomes quite different so i think then if you are in either an assistant waiting to uh, go up to an associate or an associate going trying to go up to a full what you have done are like sort of these trial periods. So like say five years in which after five years, they effectively, they decide whether they promote you or you get fired. Wait, is this tenure? <laughs> yeah, this is tenure. So you, because okay. if, you go, if you go from associate to assistant, no, all the way around. If you go from assistant <laughs> to, yeah, it's really bad. Like they, they don't, oh they're not God. even just doing English. But, so if assistant comes first. So if you move from assistant to associate, Within the American system, I'm not even making judgments about the British system here, but I think I think it's the same. If they work with the same names, it's the same system. Yeah. Then you move from untenured to tenure. So it's either they promote you or you get fired. You you just get thrown out. Ah. Oh. Okay. And I and, think But then Yeah. Isn't is I, I also have this preconception which is probably a myth that if you get tenured like you can literally just stop working nothing's gonna happen to you you've well, got I, like i a haven't job noticed i haven't noticed uh, any of the older tenured professor just quit working like they're still you know publishing at a at a rate where i'm just like do you have hobbies like or you know those are the ones you, those are the ones that you've heard of right obviously the ones that you've heard of are going to be the ones working clever, but clever. Ha- like when you get tenure you're like ah finally my goal now i can just kick back relax and stop trying it's and just get research assistance yeah exactly yeah, just it's time for add that my name to the Cayman paper Islands. yeah exactly add, add, add my name to the paper first author and then five research assistants can work on it yeah fine that's good. i i have heard of this shit as well that that's fair yeah. that's true well it's not fair but it, it's true i've i've heard of that I don't know. So, like, I know what the what the, the how assistant translates to associate, but I don't know how associate translates to, you know, a full like an an also tenure, but then full professorship. I feel like this is something that the institution just does after all. I don't think there is like I don't know if there's like you know an email you need to reply to or something, or you know a meeting you need to show up to. From what I've understood is like you seem to get this after a certain number of publications because you do go through these, um, yeah, what would you call them? Like annual checkups so that, you know, the company, in this case, the university or the department yeah. sees how you're doing, what you're doing, whatever. They're also, of course, they take into account, you know, the, obviously the number of publications is really, really important, but they also take into uh, into account the number of grants that you've successfully gotten Um and that type of stuff, you know, if you've had impact reach beyond uh, academia, because obviously um, my research group is within a business school, so we do mm-hmm. actually have to foster our ties with industry. Um, so I, I feel like yeah. there's, yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, you know, we need to make an impact. Uh-huh. 
so, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, there, there's yeah. there's stuff like that. So I feel like you know, but by by the stage that you know you you are an assistant professor within a, within an institution, um, and and you want to remain in that institution, I feel like by that stage, if you can stay on a certain uh, publication schedule, I I think you sh- you should be alright. Although. Like let's let's keep it one hundred. This is not like a two year trajectory. Like this is gonna take five to ten no. years. It's uh, it's not okay. it's not smooth sailing. It's very slow <laughs> sailing. Very slow. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where it's not like something you learn necessarily as you are just living within the world of academia. Mm-hmm. Like it just, it takes a lot of active investigation. Oh, to figure yeah. all of this stuff out, which I, I do... find quite peculiar. <laughs> no, know? absolutely. So I I do feel like there is there is a quicker way of going about this, but then you're going to have to be, you know, even more proactive and do much more research in it. Because you said yourself, you know, you can also apply to jobs. Like some institutions will make um, associate, assistant, or full tenured professorships available if they genuinely have someone uh, leaving and they... To some extent, they are legally bound to make the job process public. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, they do have to, you know, att- attract fla- uh, f- flesh, fresh blood. <laughs> fresh <laughs> sorry. flesh. Oh, yeah, sorry, 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 oh. sorry. It wasn't going well. It wasn't. You can edit this out. So, like, they, they, can't keep <laughs> and they can't keep the entire process internal. I think that is illegal, at least within the UK, to some extent. Mm. Um, but obviously, there's also ways around that because there's ways around fucking everything in the UK, even taxes. What a surprise! Hey, we where there's a will, there's a way, my friend. We yes. found it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll go yeah. with that. So I do feel like if if you if you can manage and if you can and are willing to be really proactive about, it, you can you know apply to jobs that aren't within your current institution, or even if they are within your current institution, you can fasten your trajectory by doing it that way but it probably also requires moving around a lot more which is not necessarily a bad thing but obviously you know if if you're bound you're bound as as if you're being dragged (laughs) down um, by a family and a family life of course that is a lot more difficult to do so keep it in mind yeah yeah and obviously you know women with families and men with families different Uh, game different fucking game yeah you may have a family but you know, if you outwardly present as one gender, it's uh, it's a different gonna be a, game. Yeah. It's a diff- yeah, completely different game you're playing. Yeah, there because apparently it's completely okay to be a man who drags his heteronormative should be mentioned uh, family around, you know, the fucking globe. But if you have to move for a woman's job, also in a heteronormative family, suddenly things become much more difficult. Although I'm not entirely mm. sure who's making them much more difficult or why they yeah. should be much more difficult. <laughs> which is another yeah. reason why I'm not very eager on building a family. Like I'm, I'm going to be a globe trotter next year. Who knows where I am? I don't even know where I'll be, and I'm quite okay with that prospect. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, obviously, the, the all the invisible labor and the division of that labor and childcare yeah. responsibilities normally isn't very symmetric. <laughs> we know this. That's yes. fine. Which but also fine. affects the hierarchy of the system because if you look at the yes. hierarchy of the ed- educational system, it's fucking riddled with men at the top. Which, you know, yeah. if you are a young, enthusiastic, hardworking, very intelligent female, which I am very pleased to say Sarah is most definitely, that oh, is not. Oh, f- thanks. <laughs> you're so welcome. <laughs> this is I most thought you were def- going to say that you are. No, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm, no. not, I'm not that full of myself, okay? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't suffer imposter syndrome, but I'm not that arrogant either. You know, true. I'm not a man after all. Um, true. True. But, you know, there, there's this is just not a very appealing prospect. And, of course, there are institutions who are doing better than others. But, like, this hierarchy, because age and experience plays a large role in what the the, um, the hierarchy system looks like. Mm-hmm. Feminism yep. is trying its very best. Although I think feminism could do with some rebranding, if I'm being completely honest. But, yeah, the hierarchy, yep. if you go topic. higher and higher... <laughs> oh, yeah, completely different topic. But we'll get to Close it Close that can of worms, Mello. We don't have time. Okay, <laughs> okay, sorry. Can. I'm shutting this down. The top of the pyramid within academia, yeah. much like within industry, is male. And if that is something that you don't think you can fight against for the 10 to 15 years that it will take to just progress from like PhD to 
something something professor because I don't think you can even make full professor in in that time um, anymore. I'm not it depends on the field that you're in, obviously. Then then maybe this this is not the prospect for you. This is maybe not the career for you. And I'm not oh, saying really? no, but yeah, I'm sorry, but like if if you know of yourself that you want to book results quickly, promote quickly and work in yeah. a diverse environment yes. as, it, as I mean, academia is now that is not going to be achievable and I'm not saying that this is good I'm just saying that this is as it is and I am I still actively choose to go into that environment because mm-hmm. if Sarah ever raises children because I'm very <laughs> much not likely to I want them to look towards that option and them actually seeing a diversity within that hierarchy where there's people of color and women and you know there, there's there's yeah. a bunch of men I guess some of them can stay I suppose if they can actually prove <laughs> their fucking worth and you know that there that there is something to choose and that you don't have to opt out of an entire career path because there is no representation of you within that hierarchy yeah well i know, i agree with a lot of what you're saying mostly the fact that academia is not diverse and you know science for a long time well science as we know it in europe and the united states is racist and built on systems of racism and race science and that's sexism. a whole other conversation. Yes, and sexism uh, and misogyny. And, you know, for a long time, economists, you know, I know a lot of economists who still believe that women just, it's just preferences. Women just have innately different preferences than men and women just prefer uh, to to work in low-skilled, low-paid environments and men just oh, prefer ooh, to work in high ooh. school environments there is a, a viral video on youtube i'm gonna link it below in this thing as well if i remember it because there, there is a guy a professor who i think comes mm. from an experience as being a lawyer or has been in the field of law for a long time or whatever and he's making a similar argument where he's like oh yeah women you know first of all the biological clock where i'm like not every woman fucking has that <laughs> thank you very much but he's also like you know women are actually smart enough because he's just he's just wrapping this argument differently where he's just like women are smart enough to realize that there is more to life than working 14 hours a day in very stressful environments against you know really high salary but having no life next to it and i'm like no i'll sign up for that job uh-huh. if you will fucking let me have it but you won't so it's a weird like he's almost trying to pay a compliment but it's just yeah. fucking insulting and demeaning it's I mean, so backhanded uh, it's like a massive yeah, fuck you with yeah. a bow around it where i'm like yeah, yeah. no <laughs> I mean, I, I just want to bring it back to uh, <laughs> what what you were saying before um, about you know if if you know about yourself that you don't you you want support in that work environment and you don't have want to have to battle every day uh, you know against the microaggressions like of course you know like you shouldn't have to change for the system but my advice to you rather than you know necessarily looking at your institution and thinking fuck me uh, <laughs> uh what is my life going to be like you know am i going to be defined by a part of myself that you know is is not the norm and not the default and have to deal with that and swim a bit upstream i mean i i think that there are quite a lot of communities online now of mm-hmm. that ha- i've been able to connect uh people and people's common shared experiences um i mean if we're talking about women for example the women in academia support network is an amazing resource uh it's a a facebook group uh where you have to be invited and uh you know they make sure that everyone in there is associated to a university Mm -hmm. um but honestly I've received so much support, even from just being a bystander and watching people post and have discussions about common experiences and asking for advice. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't get that from day to day, living in and working in academia in my institution. And you know mm-hmm. what? I think it's. I think Fine, it is but... hard, and a lot of people do. Uh, also, people currently in positions of, of power, people high up in the hierarchy they do actually want a more diverse academia 
because it's not looking good and it's also not sustainable and people are very much aware of this which is good step one is step one is recognizing the problem we we've managed that step i feel i hope so right well that was a fantastic Deviation. discussion it was a oh, great well. discussion but like you know well, don't like the hierarchy me. i mean we've yeah. hardly we've hardly figured out what an assistant professor is but we've given you some <laughs> tips on how to you know go your own way with a role model there you go <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean i definitely have the sort of hierarchy a little bit more figured out in my my mind obviously still a lot of question marks but uh that's life but yeah <laughs> well i i i kind of just hope that i'm not the only one who just feels a bit clueless about all of this because mm. it can feel a bit embarrassing <laughs> just, just to be like i don't really know how a career works help anyone yeah the only question. person that should feel embarrassed is the person that got to you know the highest rung in the hierarchy and can't actually tell that it was privilege that got them there that's embarrassing for the rest i feel that you know we <laughs> we should we yeah. should be good Guys, I hope it was a useful episode, or at least entertaining, thought-provoking, or a positive adjective. And we also hope that you have a great week, and we hope to see you in the next one. Yeah, thanks so much for listening, everyone, and uh, hopefully you'll stick around and hear some more from us very soon.